68 Best Bets podcast or Best Bets live stream, but we do have some news that we need to talk about. Hubert Davis is going to be the next head coach at North Carolina. Hubert Davis has the best job in all of college basketball. <laughs> Jeff, how do you feel about this? Uh, I don't love it. Uh, I got to say I don't love it. Uh, I understand it because he's a part of the family, and frankly, the family didn't have a lot of choices here. Uh, they weren't great. Uh, I would have went with Wes Miller. I've been on record saying that. Uh, he's in his late 30s. I think it's a destination job for him for 25 years. Uh, Hubert Davis isn't old. I mean, he's only 50. Uh, I don't know Hubert Davis that well. Uh, I just – I don't have a lot of faith that this thing is going to be back at the Carolina level that Carolina fans expect it to be because, frankly – Uh, It hasn't been great the last couple of years with Hubert Davis on staff and Roy Williams selling the program. How is Hubert Davis going to get it elevated back uh, if Roy Williams couldn't do that? You know, again, maybe he connects better with kids. And that's one of the reasons why Roy Williams left, frankly, and retired was because he was he was tired of dealing with with some of the kids and um, harder to connect with them and kids going in the portal and not having loyalty and some of those things. Uh, I think Hubert, yeah, could be better in that regard. But, you know, again, Hubert Davis has been described to me by many who know him as an introvert, uh, not a big personality. Now, the crazy part is he was on game day for years at ESPN. So it's like, how does that kind of coexist, right? How does a guy who's an introvert be on TV so long? And uh, I thought he was he was solid on TV. I, I just, again, I know he's been he's been with Roy as an assistant for a while now. And part of that time, Rob, was time when they were going through the academic fraud investigation. So no matter who was on staff, I don't think they would have been able to keep it. at. at, at, And they did. Obviously, they were able to win a title. So but the recruiting wasn't at the highest level, which we've seen lately with, you know, the Garrison Brookses and the um, Huffman and and some of those other big guys that caught up with them for a moment there. Um, Again, don't love it. Understand it. Felt like Bubba Cunningham. According to my sources, he swung for the fences with the guys like Mark Few and Jay Wright and Brad Stevens. And those guys aren't going anywhere. Like, Mm -hmm. this is the best job in the country, arguably, Rob. They aren't going anywhere, whether it's Indiana, whether it's Carolina. I don't care what job it is in college. Those guys aren't leaving their current spots because they're happy where they are. Yeah, and I think that, honestly, this is probably the way that I would have played it out if I was Bubba Cunningham. I would have gone after the biggest fish that you could possibly go after. You, I mean, yep. you, you call you call Mark Few, make him tell you no. You call Tony Bennett, make him tell you no. Call Jay Wright, make him tell you no. Call Brad Stevens, make him tell you no. Call Billy Donovan, make him tell you no. Call call anyone that you can think of and make him tell you no if they're going to be outside the North Carolina family. And then, I, you know, I honestly I don't have a huge problem with the the Huber Davis thing. He was on the staff that made it to a national title game in 2016. Yep. He was on the staff that won the national title in 2017. He's an alum. He played in the NBA. He keeps it in the Carolina family. It gives a guy a shot that I'm sure a lot of people that are part of that program and that have been part of that program wanted to have a shot. And you never know. Maybe you end up hitting a home run with Hubert Davis. Um, I get where you're coming from with Wes Miller. I would also understand the hesitancy to hire someone that has not coached above the SOCON to the best job in college basketball. Uh, I also think that if this doesn't work out with Hubert Davis, Wes Miller is never going to say no if North Carolina comes calling. So um, I think you can give Wes a chance to maybe get a little bit more seasoned because you know what the worst possible thing would be in that situation is you hire Wes maybe a year or two, three or four years before he's ready. Yeah. And you end up having to get rid of him before he can really get the program growing. Whereas if he can get something like, I don't know, like a, like a Charlotte level job, something like that, yeah. something in between um, a North Carolina and a UNC Greensboro where he can kind of prove his chops again, uh, then maybe you can get him again. So I don't, I understand it. Um, I don't think this is going to be the kind of hire that makes people say, Oh my gosh, look at this. They just made the greatest hire in the world. No, I don't think no. it's going to be the worst either. And, and here's the big thing is, I hope that Hubert Davis has a more modern approach to the way that he wants to coach the game than Roy Williams did. You know, Roy Williams' whole idea of we're going to throw the ball in the post, we're going to crash the glass, we're not going to recruit shooters, we're going to have uh, penetration-heavy point guards that are going to try to play a certain kind of way um, is not something that's going to work. The, the most frustrating thing for me, for Roy Williams, was watching him have a lineup where you had Nazir Little that could play small ball four as well as anybody in college basketball. Oh, you, you, you wouldn't use it. Yeah. yeah. 
he completely fought it. He completely fought it. So he wanted to play with two bigs. Uh, he wanted to play like it was still, you know, 1985. Um, now you, you've got a guy that probably will change, hopefully, and, and play smaller and play, you know, a, a more modern brand of basketball. I'm all for that. I just don't know if he gets it done. And I think a big part of it is going to be the staff. I, I do. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know if Steve Robinson stays on staff. Um, you know, maybe they promote Sean May here, who, who's been kind of in, a, in an ops role the last few years. And I think he could probably recruit. You know, the bottom line is, listen, it's going to be hard to screw up Carolina. It really is. I mean, like this is not Indiana. And I know Indiana fans don't want to hear this, but this isn't Indiana. This is arguably the best job in America. No, it's true, though. It's true. Like, this I know, is the I know. It's just, hard to screw it's, it up. It's just, it's just funny to me how you always go at Indiana fans. I know it's all, no, I love it. The I'm biggest rivalry saying, in college like, basketball. Indiana has Look, everyone, everyone wants to talk about how North Carolina Duke or Kentucky Louisville or whatever it is, the biggest rivalry in college basketball. Yeah. The truth is, is that it's Jeff Goodman against Indiana basketball fans on Twitter. That is, that's the number one. That's the most heated rivalry in college it's basketball. It's amazing now. these knuckleheads <laughs> who think Indiana is like this job that people are like, well, he turned down, you know, Carolina, all those guys. So Indiana's got to be at the same level. No, it's not. Those guys are turning down the number one job, the number twenty job, the number fifty job. It doesn't matter. Mark Few, Jay Wright are not going anywhere. Brad Stevens, if he gets fired from the Celtics. Will, will land another NBA job. He will probably not go back to college. Um, the big difference, here, here's the only other difference I'll say between Hubert Davis and Mike Woodson also is, it, you want to guess what it is, Rob? Do you want to answer that question for me? Um, What's one, the of them has college, one of them has been on a college staff for the last decade and won a national title, and the other there one hasn't been on college That's campus in four decades. That's right. That's right. And one of them's got a great job, and one of them's got a top – what do you think Indiana is? If you're ranking Indiana the top jobs in America right now, Rob, what are you ranking it? Somewhere, somewhere in that fifteen to twenty range. Yeah, I'd say twenty. I'd say somewhere I'd say in that 20. fifteen to twenty range. Yeah, I'd say twenty right now. I mean, honestly, there are a lot of people in ten, a lot who feel like Ohio State's a better job today than Indiana. Uh, we actually had one person in the chat just say this feels a lot like the Kevin Ollie hire at um, at UConn. Which I can see a little bit. Um, I think that one was a little bit more. Jim Calhoun tried to force UConn's hands with the timing that he made some of the decisions that he made uh, to be able to get Kevin Ollie in there. Um, and like Kevin Ollie won a national title. You know, it did not end well with Kevin Ollie at UConn. Uh, and it is certainly not in a position where Kevin Ollie and the University of Connecticut are on in very good terms. Uh, but it, it, he won a national title. So. Uh, yeah, the, the, the Indiana job was the top Big Ten job. I think it was two years ago that I did that. I think it was two year, two summers ago. Uh, it was two summers ago. And uh, I'm just telling you, again, uh, I've talked to a bunch of people within the league in the last uh, two weeks, and a lot of them feel like Ohio State is a better job today. Um, but, again, well, listen, I, a lot of I hope a lot Mike of Woodson – I hope Mike Woodson wins. I really do. I hope I'm wrong about this because, again, it's good for the sport. And, and uh, listen, Kenya Hunter, great that he retained him. I love Kenya. I think Kenya's terrific. Dane Fife coming on board. We both love Dane Fife. Um, I hope Dane Fife does a better job accumulating talent than they have done recently at Michigan State, frankly, because Michigan State isn't exactly a team right now that uh, that is loaded with talent. But I, I think Dane Fife's a good hire. I think Mike Lewis would be a great hire. And then you'd have a staff that, that keeps Mike Woodson in business here and gives him a chance. And the same thing goes for Hubert Davis. The staffs are – it's why I don't – if I'm going to grade the coaches, which I'm not sure I'm going to do this year, but if I grade them, I'm going to wait a month. I'm going to wait three weeks or a month till they fill out their staffs because it is so important. Like if Texas Tech hires Mark Adams right now, He's a hell of a coach, hell of a defensive coach. He's been critical for, for Chris Beard's success. But I want to see what his staff is because if he can't get three guys who can recruit, forget about it. Forget about mm -hmm. it. You're not, you're not going to keep it any, anywhere close. And, and to me, again, it, it's it's as much of the staff for Mike Woodson as anything. Yes, Dad Mata will help. Yes, Dane Fife will help. Kenya Hunter will help. I, I think that's a good staff so far that gives him an opportunity but again, I think what what Indiana fans and the good thing is too, the Big Ten's not going to be so great next year. 
And the, the Big Ten, was it really all that great this year, if we're going to be honest about it? Well, it was. It, it was. It just didn't perform when it mattered most, right? Yeah. Yep. All right. So let's uh, – what does – how does Hubert Davis get North Carolina back to the point that they are not just an elite job but one of the elite programs in college basketball because they have not been for the last – well, maybe elite programs is the wrong way. They're one of the elite teams in college basketball. They have not been in yeah. the last couple of years. They have not, and, and again – uh, it starts with with making sure you're older. You know, you're not winning with freshman guards right now unless they're game changing guards like like Kate Cunningham and Jalen Suggs. So I think you've got to get older if you're Carolina. Sprinkle in a, a, a top ten player or or two, but for the most part, uh, I want to do it with older guards. I want to make these these freshman guards, uh, Davis and Love, come back this year. I want to bring Baycott back, and then. You're going to play the transfer game a little bit, and you don't want to if you're Carolina, but there's no choice at this point um, with, with the way the game has gone that you've got to play the transfer game and, and try to not land again. They didn't have success a couple of years ago, right? They, they got Justin Pierce in the uh, and the kid from Charleston Southern, and, and neither were great. They were just okay. They've got to get high-level transfers. You've got to get high-major transfers if you're going to do that, and I, I think they can do it again. The name of Carolina is strong enough that, honestly, my daughter could be the head coach and she's going to get players. Like, Talia is going to get players to Carolina. Is she going to get the right ones? I don't know. That's going to be the big thing for Hubert Davis and his staff. Can they get the right ones? Can they get older? Uh, can they fit together? The pieces didn't quite fit together either this, this year. Yeah, I think it's very important, too, that you um, – Focus on it's something that I think we've seen with Kentucky, and I think you make the argument we've seen with, the, seen with Indiana. Uh, you got to make shooting at least somewhat of a priority. You know, you got to play at least somewhat of a modern style of basketball. Um, I was joking a little bit earlier about the the Big Ten struggles, but I do think that it's very legitimate to say that part of the reason why the Big Ten did not have a great NCAA tournament performance is because a lot of those teams play a style that is very reminiscent of the 1990s in the sense that they all have big, slow-footed, lumbering centers that can only really affect the game and impact the game positively inside eight feet from the rim, right? Whether it is someone like a Kofi Coburn or someone like a Hunter Dickinson, or even someone like I can make the argument that someone like a Luca Garza, I know he can shoot, but he's uh, defensively, he's not a guy that's going to protect the rim, and he's not a guy that's going to play it on the perimeter and switch. It's I don't think it's a coincidence that you see teams make runs like Baylor that can switch at all five spots on the floor, that you can see teams like Houston who have bigs that are really good at getting out and moving their feet on the perimeter. Um, even someone like a, a UCLA, part of why they were so effective defensively is because they were able to switch one through four because they had Jaime Hawkins playing a four, right? So mismatches. I, I think mismatches. You 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 got yes. it. listen. You gotta uh, you gotta change with the times. You gotta change with the times. I think Huber Davis will do that. I really do. And you know the Mike Woodson. I hate to go back to Indiana, but it's true. The one thing Mike Woodson will be able to do. It's obviously take a lot of his NBA coaching knowledge. And he wasn't a great coach in the NBA, but he's been in the NBA a long, long time to pick up some and things. He was, he was good enough. To like, like he yeah. did, he sure. won 54 games for the Knicks, didn't he? Yes. Like if you won 54 yes. games for the Knicks, you should be put in the fucking Hall of Fame. I mean, I don't care yeah. what anybody says. If you won 54 no. games with these New York Knickerbockers, you need to be in the Hall of Fame. He did, he did a good job at Atlanta, too, right? I think the last three years he was good with last like Al Horford, that group. Yeah. 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 The last three years he was solid. I have so one. The, NBA I don't think the basketball team. part is going to be the issue for Mike Woodson at Indiana. I think it's going to be the yeah, college sure. parts that is going to be where we kind of say, okay, like I hope you can figure this thing out. And again, like a Carolina, Rob, at Carolina, you don't necessarily have to outwork guys to get players. At Indiana, I think you do. That might be the difference especially with where you're taking it over right now. Now they got Trace coming back. They've got some talent so in the program. They're not so horrible. big for them. Getting Trace back is so huge, big. Huge, huge, huge. You know, Parker Stewart, he'll be a nice piece. Like they're not bad. I mean, they were – listen, they made the tournament a year ago, or they would have uh, if there was a tournament. So they're not awful, but they've got a lot further to dig out of, and obviously their brand isn't nearly as strong as Carolina. So to me, Carolina – Listen, if Hubert Davis wants, he can call and get involved with any player in the entire period. Indiana, no, you can't do that. Um, all right, we do have some questions in here. 
Um, yeah. I don't know if you want to. You want? Do you know anything about this Devin Askew's decision to transfer and why he made the decision to leave? Well, I, I just think it didn't work out. I, I'm sure it was probably mutual. Uh, they've got a good point guard coming in. Uh, they obviously added Kellen Grady. I, I've I've been told they might be in the mix for Marcus Carr. So I've heard the if Marcus I've actually Carr heard comes. Thing. Yeah, so I just think it's a log jam right now at that position for Kentucky. And if you're Devin Askew and you're John Calipari, you're probably saying at this point, hey, you know what? It, let's mutually agree. Uh, go somewhere else. Get a fresh start. Maybe we'll go to Louisville. Who knows? I mean, that wouldn't that wouldn't be horrible. I don't think that would be a very weird transfer because you're going on the opposite sides of a rivalry. But I don't think that it would be a bad well, fit. Chose, of- remember, he chose Kentucky over Louisville at the end. That's yeah, why I said yeah. I, the, and the big thing is, I, you know, honestly, I don't – for the life of me, I don't understand why all of these kids keep trying to rush into college a year quicker. Like, has there ever been an example of somebody that reclassified that – that other? so Anthony Edwards reclassified, but he went from he being – Yeah, but he went from – he he class, he he moved back a grade and then he moved back to his right. normal – Exactly. Class. Is there – and please, if someone in the chat can, can think of it, I, I, I'm, I'm asking you guys. Yeah, somebody this year was decent reclassing. Who was it? There was one guy who was pretty good. Lander wasn't good. Askew wasn't good. I feel like there was one dude – I can't remember right now off the top of my head – who was pretty good reclassing. I'd have to look. Um, uh, what else we got? Where will Walker Kessler go? All signs are pointing to Gonzaga. You know, obviously, you just wonder if Drew Timmy comes back and Chad Holmgren commits, why would Walker Kessler go to Gonzaga? That would be a very bad decision if he did that. Right. I, especially with, like, they still have Ben Gregg there. They still yeah, have – Yeah, Kara uh, Lewis. Kara Lewis was a good one. He was good. Yeah, Kara – thank you. Appreciate it, guys. That, that was the guy. That was the one. Yeah. But he yeah. also, like, he – yeah, Kara, Kara Lewis is – No, he example. was super young. He was super young, and he was really good. Like pretty clear. Um, RJ Bear. So that we have we have Marvin Bagley getting mentioned. Like he reclassed back to his regular grade. Like he wasn't. Right. He didn't go a year early. Exactly. Um, RJ Bear reclassed, but, I, but I'm pretty sure he was like the Canadian kids are always going to be a year older. Older, right? Yeah. Um, yeah we, have like Howard, we have Marcus Howard. is good. We have a Marcus Marcus Howard mentioned. Um, but I think, correct I me if I'm wrong. It, like that wasn't Marcus Howard didn't reclassify. He just like started he school young. early. Right? I yeah, I thought he was just young. Sort of school earlier. So um, I don't know. I, I just think it's a very bad idea for the most part for kids to reclassify and, and go to school. Like just t- you don't need to rush it. You really don't need to rush the most. No, but it's hard. Is- Listen, it's hard when, when you know, Kentucky says, hey, come come now. You're going to be the starting point guard now. And you're saying to yourself, like, how do I turn that down? Right. How do I turn? If I can have the ball for 35, you think you're good enough. He was really good on the circuit. Dominated the circuit from what I saw of him a couple of summers ago. You're thinking to yourself, all right, what more do I got to prove? I just, you know, like, all right, I'm going to do it. If they think I can do it, I think I can do it. They're going to know better than me whether I'm ready. And, you know, part of the problem for Devin Askew wasn't just Devin Askew. Now, he was part of the problem because he couldn't get by dudes. But part of the problem was he didn't have enough around him. I mean, could anybody make a shot around Devin Askew? Anybody? Uh, I mean, Davion, Davion, that's it. Yeah, you didn't even make it early. Yep. Um, how much of the the BJ and, and Terrence decision to leave Kentucky had to do with Kentucky not wanting them back? Because I don't um, – I no, understand they want, want back. They want to Brandon Boston back. They did not want Terrence Clark back from what I was told. Although at the end of the year, they were actually very impressed with Terrence Clark coming back and playing minutes in the, in the SEC uh, tournament. But I think they were ready to move on from Terrence Clark. Brandon Boston – they actually really liked at the end, and they would have loved to have him back. But, you know, again, these guys are thinking, if we come back again, our stock just dropped. We were top 10 in everybody's mock draft, and now we're barely in the first round. So we, we got to go now. Yeah. Yeah. Ken no, uh, does not need to be the lead recruiter go, going forward, whoever just said that, not the lead recruiter. Like, nobody who's who's not been on the road should be the lead recruiter. He should be – Maybe the number three guy. If you're going to bring on Kendall Marshall or promote either Kendall Marshall or Sean May, they should be the number three guy at Carolina. You better have some dudes in that number one and two seat now that you have Hubert Davis instead of Roy Williams because Roy Williams was a dude. 
he recruited every day in the summer. Like he was there every single day. I don't think he missed a day, um, to my knowledge. I, I think he was out every day, Rob. Like like is uh, during the during the uh, recruiting period. Have, have I ever told you my my favorite um, Roy Williams recruiting story? No. Okay, so this this was awesome. It was at Bishop O'Connell uh, back when Nike was doing the Global Challenge. You remember the Nike Global Challenge? Yep. yep. Um, and Kendall Marshall's dad was a. Uh, he was a, I think he was a high school coach there. Whatever, like he's tied into that. that. I've known forever. He was a coach. I don't remember if he was high school or not. He, he's he's tied in, he's tied into basketball in the DMV somehow. Yeah. And so he's he's at the event. And since this is a, a, an international event, not only can college coaches be there, but NBA scouts can be there as well. And this was the summer of 2012, uh, probably six weeks after Kendall Marshall was drafted by the Phoenix Suns as the 14th pick in the draft, right? And Kendall Marshall's dad is sitting under the basket of Bishop O'Connell. Um, up to the right in the bleachers, Roy Williams is sitting up there. The entrance is to the left on the opposite side of the court uh, from where Roy Williams is. So to get to the bleachers, you have to walk in the door and walk right in front of Kendall Marshall's dad. Yeah. Scout from the Phoenix Suns walks in. Kendall Marshall's dad stands up and says, what's going on, man? How you doing? And goes up to try to give him that. And the Phoenix Suns scout who was – I'm blanking on who it was. Uh, he okay. was a former like NBA player that was a pretty big name. Um, I can't remember who it was, and I don't want to guess because I don't want to put his name into it. But he, <laughs> but he walks in, and and Kendall Marshall's dad goes up to try to give him that, and the guy just kind of like waves him off, and is like, no, 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 I don't, I don't, no, no, we're good. I don't know you, um, and walks by and is walking in front of the coaching section, and it's quiet in the gym because it's like the middle of a timeout, and Roy Williams stands up and screams at the top of his lungs, and he's like, yo. You just blew off your lottery picks, father. Everybody <laughs> in the gym just starts cracking up and dying laughing. Oh, that was great. That was my favorite Roy recruiting moment. <laughs> just calling this dude out. So he had to go back like head in hands. Like, I'm so sorry. I didn't know who you were. I didn't recognize you. I'm not an asshole. I'm just, I get this all the time. I'm so famous. Don't you know who I am? I'm a famous NBA player. So yeah, I love that. That was really funny. That's all I got. You got anything else? Um, I'm just tweeting that about Fife, your boy. It's official. How how did Fife officially become my boy? I don't understand. I, I like Fife, but how did he become my boy? Why, why I have no boy? idea. But why, he, am, I, why am I the only one associated? Yeah, we should we, we should do another now that 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 Roy's gone. Let, let, let's do a quick let's do a quick five minute segment on on I think I have five minutes. Uh, the 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 current Duke deal. The current Duke deal. If if K were to retire. If K were to retire tomorrow, who would be the head coach? Who would you who would you hire as the head coach of yeah. your Duke Blue Devils? Bobby? Of, of my of my Duke Blue. Well, they're Devils. yours right now. I'm just I'm letting you my, I'm letting my, you run them. That it's it's such a loaded question because I mean they're going to want to keep it in the family, right? Yep. Um, but who is the most successful person in that that coaching tree right now? Is it? I don't even is it is it Johnny Dawkins? Like is it Mike Bray? Is it Bojo just got fired? Is it Jeff Capel because he made he got pit to 12 wins or whatever he did? Is it Chris Collins because four years ago he got Northwestern to the NCAA tournament? Like who the Tommy Amaker from Harvard? I don't know. I have no idea. I wonder if it's another situation where you just kind of give it to Shire because he's the lead assistant right now and say, okay, well, we're gonna figure it out with Shire. There's no good options. And in four or five years, if this doesn't work out, then we'll, we can hit the refresh button. But for now, we keep the continuity in the program. We're going to keep the players that we have in the program. We're going to keep the head, the former head coach happy that is obviously going to stay involved. We're going to keep the alums happy that all like Shire because I think everybody on the planet, except for Maryland basketball fans, like Shire. So yeah. I think that's pr probably where I would end up, even though he's like 33 years old and going to be coaching at the one of the best jobs in the country. I don't know. I think that's probably I, what I, I would do. Yeah, like, listen, with the way everything's headed right now, is that – like, you you ran through them, right? Chris Collins um, has a new AD now and has to win. Wojo is out of a job. I always thought Wojo would be the guy as long as he won at the time when K retires. He may not be employed at the time K retires now, so he's out of the mix. Um, you know, uh, Capel is certainly struggling a bit right now. I don't even know if he can field the team this year. Um Dawkins to me hasn't done anything. Uh, what are you laughing at? It's true. I don't know if he's got. I know. Like, Pitt's got like, like three. Guys. They got three guys on the roster. 
Um, Mike Bray. Mike Bray's Mike Bray's in danger of getting fired or just retiring at Notre Dame. He's well, he's not Mike a member. Bray, true Mike member Bray does of not want to do. There's the last thing in the yeah. world that Mike Bray wants right now is have to go coach Duke. I think Quinn he would have much rather. Quinn Snyder is a stud in the NBA right now. There's no way in hell he would no even listen either. to it. Jeff, um, let, me ask, let me ask you this question: Do you think yeah. Mike Bray, if you gave him these two options, option A, you and Coach K can switch jobs, or option B? You and Martin Inglesby at the University of Delaware right now can switch jobs. Which one does he say yes to? Because I think oh, he goes to Delaware, so he's 45 minutes away from Rehoboth Beach. Yes. Right? He's at his alma mater. There's no pressure. He doesn't have to do anything. And he just gets to coach for fun. Like, you don't have to worry about oh, it. There's a name. Marlo, with the name of the chat, I actually like that one. I don't I don't know if it would work, but I, I haven't heard that. I actually like that, Rob. Tell me, tell me. Hold on, honestly, hold on, hold on, hold on, Jeff. Who is who? Who's that in the chat right now? Jay. Well, uh, oh, it's uh, it's 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 our boy. Yeah. Wait, who is it though? Who is, is it? Marlo Stanfield. Marlo no, Stanfield in the chat right now. What's his name? Yeah, Marlo. What's, Marlo Stanfield's helping in the chat. We got Marlo Stanfield here. Congrats. Jay Billis, man. Greg Paulus. Glad you didn't get locked up. Do you think? Do you think Billis? <laughs> seriously, do you think Billis would get some play for that job? I'm sure somebody would mention him. I have zero doubt that somebody would mention him. I mean, you have on staff now Carowell, Shire, and I think Nolan Smith is going to be <laughs> elevated, which he should. I think oh, he no. Here's here's the answer. Here's Go the ahead. answer. Who's the answer? No. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, I don't think it's going to be Jeff Capel. I think a lot of people thought it would be Capel. Um, it, it's, to me, it would not be Jeff Capel if, if it happened tomorrow. I'm kind of with you. I, I think it probably would be Shire with, with the way everything's gone. And he's been on staff for what? How many years now? What are we, five, six years? Five years? It's getting up there. When did he retire? I think he retired in 2016. Like five years. I think it's five years, Shire. yeah. You know, like, and, and again, mo what people don't realize is most of these guys don't want this job. They don't want it. Why would you want it? You're going to fall Okay. Now, Bobby Hurley is the one we haven't talked about yet, okay? He's the one we haven't talked about yet. They had an awful year at Arizona State, but he would want the job. That's the difference between him, everybody else we've named, is Bobby Hurley would say, like, I absolutely – Quinn Snyder can't – like, no, he's not taking it. Quinn Snyder's got the – he's doing the best job in the NBA. He's not leaving for Duke right now. He, he's – again, guys don't leave head NBA jobs for college jobs unless they're fired. They're not leaving those. Unless they don't uh, have an option, right? Right. Unless they no have other option. option. Yes, that, that's one thing. Chris Collins, no, we already talked about him. Tommy Amaker. The only thing I'd say about Amaker, here's the only thing, Rob, is after last year when they didn't play in the Ivy League, like I don't think Amaker wants the job. I don't think he wants it. He loves Boston. Uh, he loves Cape Cod. And uh, I, I think ultimately he wouldn't want it. But again, the hard part is if Kay asks you to take it, no matter who you are, don't you have no choice? You have to take it. Probably, but who who would Kay ask to take it? That I mean, that's that's the thing I don't know, because the, <laughs> that is the big question. Nobody, nobody, nobody from the tree has, has done Stevens. anything. Anything yeah, close? Brad to Stevens, that. probably. Maybe, maybe Jim Beheim. Oh yeah, there you go. There you go. They can. They can coach together. They can co-coach at Duke for for a year or two. But yeah, I, I, like I think, I think Shire would be especially if K can go another year or two, and you've got Shire with he's only I mean, thirty. I'm, honestly, the, the, it's just it's the easy answer um, because you can just kind of say this was the guy that was on staff, and we wanted to keep the continuity. He's this is the guy that 14. understands the current the current version of. Um, Duke basketball right now, right? And if it doesn't work, then you can go out and you can make another hire. But there's also a chance that it will work. Like the same thing with Hubert Davis. There's a very real chance that this could end up being the kind of hire that gets North Carolina back to being the team that competes for ACC regular season titles and that gets to Final Fours and wins national titles. Remember, North Carolina is what? Four years, three NCAA tournaments removed from winning the national title? The only teams that have won a national title since they won their national title are Virginia and Villanova. That's it. That's it. So yeah. I, it's not like they have this huge mountain to climb, and it's not like Hubert wasn't a huge part of building that, that program to the point that it got to, especially when you consider the fact that 
they didn't make their run because of these massive recruiting wins, right? Like they didn't win a national title because they had Anthony Davis and Michael Kidd Gilchrist. They didn't win a national title because they had Jaleel Okafor and Tyus Jones and Justice Winslow and all these guys. They won a national title because they got a bunch of guys that were just under the radar. They identified the players that would fit for what they wanted to do. Um, they developed them. Uh, they got them to the point where they were all Americans as juniors and seniors, and Hubert Davis was intimately involved in all of that, and I, I, I think that would make a lot of sense. Um, here's a really interesting name, and I want your opinion on this. Again, coming from our boy, Marlo Stanfield, <laughs> Carol Lawson. Well, she's got to win at Duke first. She'd have to win. She hasn't even coached a game yet, right? Didn't they bail at the beginning of the season? Did they? I don't even know if they played a game. So I don't think you can give it to her today. Uh, Rick Barnes, no. Um, yeah, Shane Battier, no. Grand Hill, why not? Grand Hill does like 8,000 other jobs. I mean, seriously, he owns the Hawks. He runs USA Basketball. He's a Turner. And I've never seen anybody hold more titles and positions than Grand Hill. I don't can know how you, he gets any work done. Can you um, – if you are a part owner of the Hawks, can you coach a college basketball team? Can you – can you – commentate for Turner about players that are in college that are, that are, that are eligible. Like, I don't understand how we can do that. Do I think, it, I think it's different calling a game um, than it is actually being intimately involved in coaching a team while you own a port, the coaching a college team while owning a portion of another team. Um, it dep I don't know how much, what percentage is the owner of the Hawks? Like he's just a minority owner, right? He is a minority owner. Is it like the kind of thing where he just owns some shares in it and has no involvement. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it's crazy, though. Like, I've never seen anybody, honestly, he was on, like, the commission for college. Like, this dude does everything. Yep. He, he also everything. he also one time I was going out to uh, – what's the chicken and waffles place in Durham called? Oh, I forget. It's good. Good spot, though. But, uh, the I can, I'm, I can never remember the name of it. But I was going there. I was with uh, – it was when Duke was playing Indiana back in, like, 2017 in the Big Ten Challenge. Um, it was no, it was 2016. It was the year that Tom Crean actually went out and won because I wrote this big column about ah, Duke is horrible, or I'm sorry, Indiana's horrible. We're never going to see anything more of them. Like they never lost again. They ended up making it to the uh, to the Sweet 16 that year as, as Big Ten champions. But I was there with I think it was Zach Osterman, Dana O'Neill, and maybe Borzello. And we were waiting in line for like 45 minutes and we had our table all lined up and the waitress was like, all right, we're getting your table set up. It's going to be right over there. You're going to sit at that table right there. Uh, and then she never came to get us and she sat Grant Hill and some companion of his at our table. And she was like, sorry, we had to give the table away. I was like, yeah, it's a grant. I get a it. More grant, you know. grant a little more like, I get it. I get it. I can't even, you can't even be mad at that one. Can you? No, no, no. Uh, All right, this guy uh, out here. Not I, ready I got, to announce anything yet, scholar. So, um, what, with the who's not, wait, what, what was the question? The top, the top question in the chat. Maybe soon. Maybe soon. When, when are you announcing the Arizona news? Yes. Uh, look, you know what? I'll. I know you don't want to report it, but I'm going to put it out there. I'm going to be the one no. to say. It. I'm going to be the one no. to put it out there. No. Jeff no. Goodman no. is going no. to be the next head coach at the University of Arizona. He has Why accepted the job. Don Miller gave it to him. Why would you break that news? I would crush it. I would crush it. <laughs> you would cheat your balls off. I would the the one thing that would be great about putting you on a college coaching staff is how much you would cheat. And I want to I want to know how long you would go before you got in trouble with the NCAA and got a show cause. I'm gonna give it nine wait, months. Wait, 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 wait. You know, First of all, here's what would happen. You would cheat your balls off and then you would go on a live stream after you've had three blue moons and you would start talking about, oh yeah, you wanna know why Walker Kessler transferred to Gonzaga? Because I gave him a hundred thousand dollars from a booster that flew me to the final four last week. That's nobody what would happened. ever catch me. Nobody would ever catch <laughs> NCAA would never catch me. Trust me, I'd be like 20 steps ahead of them. I'd be like Slick Rick. <laughs> Slick Rick. <laughs> oh man. You don't make enough money to do what Slick Rick does. Uh, good point. Good point. All yeah. right. We are out. Uh there's our our and we'll be doing this more. You know, with the season ending tonight, we got the the, the national title game here in a few hours. Um, but anything else. Uh, that breaks anything sizable in the off season. We, we'll we'll do these once a week just to kind of uh, keep the college hoops uh, juices flowing. Um, sources tell me uh, Goodman and Arizona have an agreement in place. Nothing is finalized. <laughs>
<laughs> Jeff Goodman is expected. My barring, staff. Bargain, barring, bargain change in situation. Goodman is expected to be. With, with the coach. I would crush it with my staff. Like I'm putting together my staff now, Dustin. Who would you it'd hire? Be better okay. than your, hey, who would, it, who would your staff be in Arizona? It'd be way better. Mike Miller. Mike Miller would be on my staff 100%. All right? Like, I'd get dudes. I would get uh, Mike Miller, uh, Damon Stoudemire, uh, just guys who could drop bags. That's all. They'd have $100 million in their freaking bank account. You, like, think you about a, it. You need a coach there, too, though. You need a coach. Huh? You, you need a coach, coach there, too. I'm going to coach. Yeah. <laughs> I don't need anybody. No, I get. Uh, I, would love, I would love to see you. I would love to see you develop ball screen coverages for this Baylor defense. That, that, that's what I want to see. I want to see you start coaching people up in ball screen coverage. I'm just gonna have dudes. I'm gonna have the best players in America. It doesn't matter. <laughs> You'd be the best AU college coach. I'm All literally right. rolling the ball. Up. Do him. Do him. Do him. Do this. him. I'd be playing. I'd be coaching with these things in. I'd be like <laughs> with a hat on. You know, like like it would be. Honestly, it'd be a U ball. I roll it out. Just roll the ball out, baby. When you got the best players, it doesn't matter, right? Exactly. Exactly. All right, Jeff. All right. We're out. Later. Gilbert Arenas. Oh, Gilbert would be awesome on my staff. <laughs> entertainment. You just want entertainment? He's got how much money has yeah. he got? Who wants to, who wants to win games when you can be entertained by Gilbert Screw Arenas? It. Like just honestly, think of all the money we could drop with NIL coming in. True. Mike Miller, Damon Stoudemire. Gilbert Arenas, it's a 